Nikwai is just a guy that doesn't like to talk a lot, and this is not the Spurs. People don't know him here, so what's the closest thing to Kawhi? It's going to be Danny. So they're going to come to him a lot, want to know good and bad things, and, what, and whether he's staying, whether he's happy. This is Danny Green, and you are listening to Inside the Green Room with myself and my co-host Harrison Sanford. Throughout the podcast, you'll hear about our life experiences from wins, NBA titles, NCAA championships, to the losses, being sent to the G League, overseas, and everything in between. Stay tuned. Welcome to Inside the Green Room with Danny Green. I'm your co-host, Harrison Sanford. This is a special Media Day episode as we continue to inch towards the season. Before we get into the conversation between myself and Danny, as well as Steve Smith from NBA TV, we want to play you some of the press conference today between Kawhi Leonard, Masai Ujiri, and of course, Danny. Tune in. Uh, a lot of people up here don't know much about you. Can you, how would you describe yourself? And what would you like people to know about you? I'm a fun guy. Uh, obviously, I love the game of basketball. Um, I mean, it's just more questions you have to ask me um, in order for me to tell you about myself. I just can't give you a whole spiel. I don't even know where you're sitting at. <laughs> <laughs> What was your uh, initial thoughts when you heard you'd been traded to Toronto? Um, excited, knowing I'm coming to a great city that loves basketball, great organization, and uh, uh, happy that Danny was coming with me as well. <laughs> uh, Kawhi and Danny, what excites you the most about this roster, about the guys that are already on there? Ah, uh, included me, okay. Oh, <laughs> uh, I was wondering if I was gonna get to talk today. You know what I'm saying? Oh. Uh, <laughs> Kawhi, how do you view your time coming in here, and do you look at this as a long-term commitment? I look at I look at it as a day-to-day process. Uh, like I said, my focus on is th- my focus is on this year, uh, this group that I have, and us striving to get to a championship. Um, we all want to win, and if you look in in the future, you're gonna you know trip over the present. So. Guys, the, nar- the narrative of not wanting to come to this city is gone. You know, like, I think that's old and we should move past that. We should stop talking about, like, coming to the city or wanting to come to the city. That's, that's old talk. Um, I think let's be proud and, you know, like, let's move past that narrative of wanting to stay here or wanting to come here. This is Danny Green, Inside the Green Room. Make sure to follow us on all social media. On Instagram, we are at Inside Green Room. On Twitter, we are Green Room Inside. Also, if you want to hear your questions answered in our mailbag, shoot us an email at InsideDGreenRoom at gmail.com. Once again, InsideDGreenRoom at gmail.com. That's green like the color with no E at the end. You never know. You just might want a gift from me or one of our guests. Until then, let's get back to the podcast. Welcome to Inside the Green Room, special media day edition. Danny's probably done how many chill, interviews chill. today? Yeah, man, <laughs> a lot. It was hectic. It was cool, though. I mean, it's different. Yeah. San Antonio, we do more, you know, video stuff, mm-hmm. a little bit of audio, some, you know, one word catchphrases, not as many interviews. Mm hmm. But um, and not so much movement, and it's not as cold. Yeah, the right arena, by the, the, the hockey freezing. rink. Yeah, inside and outside, it's cold as hell. Yeah, but um, yeah, a lot of fun, man. Fresh, mm-hmm. you know, new faces, new jerseys, a little different actions, picture scenes, video, audio, mm-hmm. and a lot of interviews. But so taking it all in stride and and having fun with it. We're gonna talk about the press conference today with Kawhi Leonard. Yeah. There's some comments from Kyle Lowry that happened as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're gonna talk about other things that's happening in the NBA. But first, we have to react to our time in Halifax. Yeah. Uh, good time. It was nice to go to uh, the Canadian Museum of Immigration. It's kind of a unique opportunity. It was very unique, man. I had a great time. Even though it was raining, I would love to go back. I still got to go back try the seafood again. You're supposed a, to see some great, a Don Air, just, yeah. which was okay. <laughs> we call it a, a, a gyro in America. <laughs> yes. Yeah, no, we call it a, a euro. euro. Yeah, most you know, people don't know how to pronounce it. A gyro in America. But, um, but the Don it was Air, cool, the man. Don Air, yeah. Don Air sauce. Yeah, it was... Um, it was cool. I had a great time. You know, rain. Checked out a nice restaurant, seafood. I should have got the, seafood. I didn't. Dessert was but, uh, good. Dessert was great, man. I'm sure yours was good. You had two of them. <laughs> For those who are listening in, funny story. <laughs> Tell them the story. Uh, we didn't know that Harrison is allergic to nuts. We had no idea he was allergic to nuts. 
Mind you, I had this, uh, it was a chocolate cake, maybe? Chocolate it cake? It was a small chocolate fudge cake or whatever. I ate the whole thing, and it was great. And Harrison ate about three quarters, <laughs> a half of his. <laughs> As he's halfway through, for some reason, thinks there's nuts in the cake. And I said, yeah, there's no nuts in the cake. And out of nowhere, I think I'm in a psych word of how he's mashing up this cake. <laughs> Mash chocolate looking cake. Looking up for damn nuts. I'm like, what the hell is your problem? What are you doing to the cake, bro? Does it have nuts in it? And he's with his fork, smashing, the, cutting it into a thousand pieces to see if there's nuts. I said, bro, if you cut it in th- the three times start to close it up. and don't, if you don't see nuts by the third cut, there's no nuts in the, the fucking <laughs> cut cake, bro. In the brownie. Well, Jesus Christ. It was the yeah, un- was, most unbelievable thing I've seen out. happen to a dessert. <laughs> <laughs> Man, so please, anybody in any restaurants, do not bring nuts around Harrison. He will become schizophrenic <laughs> yes. and go crazy <laughs> on whatever dessert it is you may have. So, yeah. but it was a great time. Dessert was good. Dessert. I'm sure your second one was good. They brought him a second one after dessert that. Was dessert good. was good. I think we got Steve here. Can we? Yeah. Just, can we just hop? Can Steve just hop? Can on? Steve hop on? Or just how he just, just, just plug him in? Can we just plug him in? Okay. Is that cool? The beauty of live podcasting yeah. is that we're going to actually get Steve Smith here with us. Yeah. Appreciate you jumping on, man. So what if it, it was nuts and you know, his throat he started to close up? Thought, so what were you going to do? I would have I found a, a pen. <laughs> EpiPen. Epi so I want to give him the shot. Somebody else would have do it. But did he have an EpiPen? Did you have one? I, I did not have an EpiPen. I, have one. One. I felt like my throat was closing up. So that's up. why I started <laughs> freaking out because his throat started closing up and he started mashing the cake. <laughs> mashing the cake. Yeah, I wouldn't have been the one to do it, but somebody would have found an EpiPen somewhere. <laughs> Good yeah. times in Halifax for sure. Steve, thank you for coming here no with problem. us. No problem. What were your impressions of Media Day, the press conference with Kawhi and Danny has been obviously highly anticipated. Um, what were your thoughts about what was said today from Kawhi? I thought he had a real uh, interesting quote there at one well, point. It was good. I mean, I think Danny knows his best. You, you have teammates like that. There are some guys that just don't like the media. I played with one in San Antonio, Tim Duncan. Um, <laughs> oh, just, both, well, both of you guys did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, Tim yeah. just he lightened up as the years went on. And to some guys, it's just that's not what their thing is for the media. And Danny said it best. Um, you know guys different from when they portray to the media versus being your teammate in the locker room. And the one thing is, hopefully in my generation, I hope it continues in their generation, it just stays in the locker room. It stays within yeah. the confine of mm-hmm. your team. And obviously, it's his right to have the same kind of impression for the media. only thing is, it's taken as a negative if, you, if the media doesn't get everything they want. But it's yep. not. That doesn't mean that he's a negative person or he's any type of person other than you got a chance to know somebody. And guys will only know guys that's been in the locker room, been around, and been on the bus trips to know the type of guy he really mm-hmm. is. And he made people laugh today, Danny. Yeah. So um, and people saw him laugh today. So yeah, that's, that's a big good. That's a big trending thing now. Um, you know, his laugh. People don't see him laugh or smile much today. But, you know, we try to make it light. We try to make it smooth. I, I tried to take some questions away from him because I knew they were just waiting to dive in. Everybody in the media wanted to ask Kawhi a question, Kawhi, Kawhi, Kawhi. You know, he obviously does not like talking. There's a reason why you guys are just now seeing him. He does not want to be answering a million questions. So, uh, Masai did a good, try, good job of, you know, jumping a little bit. I try to jump in a little bit and uh, take some heat off of him. But uh, all in all, it was a good day. And I think it was interesting for a lot of people. I'm still interested to wait to see and hear, you know, what other guys had to say. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I know Kyle did a couple interviews with mm-hmm. you guys. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, Norm just passed by. Fred, um, you know, OG was here. Um, Serge, he, he got in and out. But hopefully we'll hear from Serge. Serge, well, he has a you know, cooking show. He wants me to come on, bring the snakes. Yo, so I told him I'll, wait, I'll, I'll cook the snakes. Have you heard about cooking this cooking the snakes, show, Steve? Harrison, Jesus Christ, we're not cooking the snakes. Oh, about this, I'm bringing my wor- pet snakes. He, he, co- on. he cooked worms on the show. Uh, yeah, he's not cooking he cooked, my snakes. He cow tongue. Have no, you no, seen I, it? I've heard of cooking shows, but I, I really want to send a snake. You know, that's, 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 that's something easy, different. It is. It's just an easy. So when I got a pet, I was <laughs> able to take care of a mammal. Reptiles are easier mm-hmm. to take care of. Snakes you only feed like once a month, and only needs water and heat. So it's very easy. Now that I have I had a girlfriend, yeah. I was able to get dogs. But I had the snakes. And he's like, you know, come on the show. We'll do the cooking show. He said, bring no, the no, 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 no. Let's yeah. go back to the snakes. Yeah. <laughs> I told him, I was, he said, what bring the snakes. What does a snake, you know, what do you do? You can't walk the snake. No, you can't walk them, but you handle them. So okay. snakes, you handle them. They get used to you as a human. They get your scent, your smell, but you mm-hmm. handle them. You hold them. And they can go in the grass, and they like the sun. They're desert animals. Um, so they do like the sun and heat. But they, they climb. I think the most interesting thing about them is how they eat. So they eat and digest. They eat once a month. And it takes them about a week or two to digest. They eat that's big crazy. things that's bigger mm-hmm. than their mouth and their head. And ten times they could expand their mouth. 
and you know they don't have to eat that often so they're very low maintenance so when you're on road trips say an <laughs> east coast trip when you play mm -hmm. you know in, in, in san antonio well, who takes care of the snake actually they take care of themselves mm -hmm. um so even when i was seven i was single i was by myself i do have a girlfriend now who has lived with me in san antonio who's kind of come to toronto she uh helps with the dogs but before she came before i got the dogs i had just the snake so i can leave them months on end without food as long as they have water and heat i just clean the tank and they can just sit there so they don't have to eat for weeks and by the time i come back if they're hungry i'll feed them but they can go you know up to six months without eating did you bring the snakes around your teammates um, not much. Okay. I did bring him in the. Or, we uh, had a problem. Because I don't really like snakes, Dan. You know what I mean? Not that a lot of people do. Okay, it's a yeah, scary thing. So it's, 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 it's not snakes. something you know. You so, know. some of the video room guys wanted to see uh, one of my little guys eat. So, I brought one in um, after practice and we watched him eat in the back, you know, behind the facility with none of the players around. So, a lot of guys were scared of him. But Manu brought his kids over because they were fascinated by animals and they wanted to watch him eat. So, uh, it was fun times. You know, a little you know, Nico, Dante, and then Luke. Luca, you know, they watched the small one eat, and they were amazed by it. Don't bring the snake to a podcast taping either. I'm not down with that. <laughs> yeah, most people are scared, man. But you got to get over that fear. The only way to get over it, man, is to face it. Right? It's true. So it's I'll true. bring my little guy in next time we do this for Harrison and help him get over that fear. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, hopefully uh, you don't treat it like the cake. <laughs> treat it like <laughs> the, the cake. nuts. The nuts. And, <laughs> Jesus. Steve, uh, when I, you were interviewing Danny earlier today, and, and when you guys were departing, you said to him, what do you want to do when you're done with this? Mm -hmm. And he said, you know, I want to go into broadcasting. And you would say, man, listen, soak up, soak up as much as you can on that court. Your experience now moving to the media side and also being at a day like media day, which is like the beginning of the NBA season, did you start to feel nostalgic um, on this side because you wanted to play basketball mm -hmm. again? Not at all. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> uh, I will say, just uh, Danny's ahead of the curve because I didn't really know what I wanted to do after basketball. I've been doing real estate since my rookie year. So that's something mm -hmm. that um, I'm hands-on on, but it doesn't take a lot of involvement, you know, from a standpoint of a competitive standpoint. Mm -hmm. um, being able to do and know what he wants to do I think he's head of the game, but also, also wanting to understand, and he does, you know, your body's going to tell you when it's time to quit, but now the way he's taking care of his body, he can play as long as possible because no matter what, when you retire, you're going to miss it. Mm -hmm. It's tough. I mean, um, you'll never be able to get that interactive competitiveness. We have some old guys in Atlanta. It's me, Antonio Davis, Dale Davis. There's about 12 of us we play. <laughs> it ain't the same. It's <laughs> not the same. Yeah, I mean, so we've been doing it for the last, I would say, 15 years. Are you, still, are you the best one on that court now? It depends on how much I stretch and how much <laughs> and who you're playing with. I mean, it, we get together because of camaraderie. It's mm -hmm. definitely not because of the basketball. And mm -hmm. that's the thing you're going to miss a lot. And you're going to have your family. You're going to have your kids and your, you know, your inner family. But that type of family is totally different. Um, play as long as you can, as long as you enjoy it, as long as your body is allowing. Because there's been a lot of guys that's retired a little bit too early. For sure. And, it, and it's hard to get the juices back to go back to play. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This might be a little bit different for Danny to talk about. Mm -hmm. The biggest buzz in the NBA, Jimmy Butler. Mm -hmm. On the requesting a trade. He didn't even show up to media day today. It was excused from coming to media day. What are your thoughts on that whole situation, and how does that impact the entire league, and particularly, obviously, with it being Danny's podcast, how does that potentially impact the Eastern Conference, the Raptors, and things of that nature? Well, it's impact if, obviously, he's traded to the Eastern yeah. Conference. Um, obviously, we don't know if the Minnesota Timberwolves, they have had some internal things going on where mm -hmm. I, I haven't heard where the first time for me, Dan, I've been a long time where the ownership said, I'm taking the calls. <laughs> yeah. So it, it feels yeah. like the calls, and obviously, you have a – a president and a coach in Tom Thibodeau has been around. So they have some internal things going on, and obviously Jimmy doesn't want to be there. That still doesn't mean he's going to get traded. But mm -hmm. obviously it impacts the Eastern Conference if he's traded to the Eastern Conference. But it impacts the Minnesota Timberwolves because he's a big part of their plan. And obviously him coming out this late and saying he doesn't want to be there, you know, it makes it a little bit tougher for the Minnesota Timberwolves. Mm -hmm. And also as an organization, um, if, if you're calling me and I know you want to trade Jimmy Butler and you – Oh, pretty yeah, much have to. Oh, yeah. You don't get the same value back. I'm not going to yeah, offer. At the end tough. of the day, they might, but I'm just not going to offer the first offer uh, pretty much what's best for you. It's yes. going to yeah. be more leaning on what's best for me and see if you take it. I think we're all wondering what well, I'm wondering and a lot of fans are wondering what happened, you know, mm -hmm. to make him requ request this trade now. You know, I, I, maybe it was a mini camp where he realized, you know, he couldn't do any more with, you know, playing with certain guys or something happened in the locker room. Or maybe it was the coach. I don't think it was Tibbs, though. I think Tibbs, him and Tibbs have a good relationship. Maybe it was ownership. But um, as it is kind of late in the summer to request requesting a trade right now, 
But um, as you see, they're, they're keeping Carl Anthony Towns. They made sure they got that piece in, in play. Well, that's necessary. That's, that's, giving him, you're giving him Jimmy, what he, he has yeah, to lock yeah, somebody yeah, like yeah, him two Towns locked in. To Danny's point, yeah, mm-hmm. it's very interesting. The reason why is um, he accepted the trade to go to Minnesota, and yeah. obviously, yeah. a lot of people say you can't veto a trade, but people want to know if the superstar wants to come and they gave up a lot Zach Levine and mm. Larry uh, Kid, Marketing La Marketing and Chris yep. Dunn so they gave up a lot for Jimmy Butler so mm. you would think he wanted to go to Minnesota he wanted to be with Tibbs um, got some of his former teammates back playing with Intaj mm-hmm. Derrick Rose Lou Aldang all they need is Noah yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the Chicago and he Bulls so the way. it's mm. very interesting and, and we'll probably find out what happens mm-hmm. um, for me as the media being an ex-player Hopefully I don't. Hopefully I love for things to stay in house, but yeah. it's going to be tough. It's gonna um, come that request this late in the game yeah. before training camp. How do you evaluate uh, how Danny specifically can impact the Raptors? Obviously, we know how Kawhi can impact the team. We'll get to that a bit, but how can Danny impact the Raptors? You know, Steve? so much a veteran can do, and it's on the court, but a lot off the court. He started today just making it comfortable for Kawhi Leonard and his organization throughout this media when when they were going through their press conference. Those are little things that veterans do, and they've been around. He knew when to jump in. He knew <laughs> when to kind of deflect some of the some of the answers. And it's going to do that all year for him, which is, you know, good and a bad yeah, thing. You good, yeah. you good for that? Yeah, because it's, <laughs> I'm a parent, man. This is helping me prepare it, it, right It's going to definitely help him prepare. It's going to fast forward and fast track him because um, the quad's just a guy that doesn't like to talk a lot. And, this is not dispersed. People don't know him here, so what's mm-hmm. the closest thing to Kawhi? It's going to be Danny. So mm-hmm. they're going to come to him a lot, want to know good and bad things, and, what, and whether he's staying, whether he's happy. And then, first of all, you know, if they if you can win, it cures a lot of things. And I think for Danny, just bringing in, when you have an older guy that's won a championship, the younger guys, hopefully, they want to be sponges and ask questions. And that's the one thing I think – Younger guys that they can do lean on the veteran. You know, I used to try to take a veteran out to lunch after every shoot around. Just mm. to, and then one of my best veterans had nothing to do with basketball. And rest his soul was Manu Bow. Wow. Uh, wow. He just taught me the game of life more than we played totally different positions. Mm-hmm. Uh, Manu slung, slung a lot of threes up, but <laughs> uh, just he taught me about having been a family man, a guy understanding your worth, understanding you'd be professional. I tell you a story, Dan. I'm in Miami. I had shorts and a polo going to the game. Oh, okay. He grabbed me by the ear and he said, you're representing your family. Mm-hmm. Wear a suit to every game. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, who knew? It's 90. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wear a suit to every game. So I wore a suit to every game. In Miami. I bet that, yeah. In Miami. Oh, well. Oh. Nice. Thin threads, yeah, though. Like, yeah, they need a breathable thread. They were professional back then. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I wish they had a suit with the shorts the those days. It would have been mm-hmm. nice. That would have came in handy back then. <laughs> back back Miami. in the day, for sure. Yeah. Bronze uh, trend came in a little late. <laughs> Steve, uh, real quick, prediction for the, fi- for the finals. And Eastern, Con- Eastern Conference, Western Conference East, finals. Eastern Conference, I said it on NBA TV, I think it's Boston and Toronto. I think, mm-hmm. um, and on the other side, I think it's the Golden State Warriors and the Houston Rockets. Mm-hmm. Um, I think on the Golden State going back to the finals, and I picked the Boston Celtics. I think you got to look Danny in the eye when you say that, at uh, least. All good, it's all good. <laughs> I, I'm, not, I'm not trying to propose to you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the reason why I think it's going to take them a year. You know, they'll always take a year. Um, mm-hmm. And obviously, Danny and them, they shouldn't think like that. But I think when you have a new coach, and obviously the, uh, this trade, it always takes a year to mm-hmm. get over the hump. I mm-hmm. thought it could happen one year when Portland, we lost to the Lakers in that Western Conference mm-hmm. Finals. Didn't get that chance. Our organization, top to bottom, they jumped the gun, started making more trades. But it usually will take you a year to get over that hump in jail together. Mm-hmm. And that's the interesting thing about this whole situation. Depending on what happens, it could only be a year in itself. That's a Danny uh, question. Yes, that's no, a Danny yeah. question. Yeah. That's a Danny question. Yeah. Yeah. Indeed. For Steve, sure. We appreciate you coming appreciate on. Thanks you for the time. Thank you, Thank man. I really appreciate it. Music for Inside the Green Room is provided on behalf of The Cut Buddy, the number one best-selling beard and haircut tool as seen in GQ, Forbes, and on Shark Tank. Give their website a visit at thecutbuddy.com. We'll get to the mail back here in a second. But Danny, a uh, real quick, wants to talk about Kyle Lowry's comments saying that he hasn't talked to Kawhi uh-huh. all summer. Mm-hmm. But then he backed it up by saying he's my teammate. And and everybody knows I ride or die for my teammates. That's um, his Kyle, man. East Coast guy. You know what I'm saying? Where he comes from. He's a Philly boy. Um, you know, he, he's he's a bull. End of the day, he's a competitor. Um, you know, his heart, that's what keeps him, that's what brought him to the league, that's what keeps him in the league. Cause he ain't the biggest soul, he ain't the biggest body, he ain't the most talented guy. He has a lot of heart and he works hard. 
and he you know fights for his teammates. So you know that's good to hear. I'm sure Kawhi is you know happy to hear that as well. Mm -hmm. um, we all are, and you know so it's been a long time since I've played against Kyle in high school days and stuff like that, or even you know NBA. But playing as a youngster, playing mm -hmm. with him then. But you know, it's been a minute since we actually you know been on the same team um, since like five star camp or something like that. Yeah. But, um, yeah, man, I'm looking forward to it. And, um, you know, he's always got some great things to say. And um, I know he's going to you know, ride for us regardless. And we have hopefully have a great year ahead. Real, real quick, who has DeMar DeRozan's locker now? Uh, that's a good question. I don't know. They didn't tell me which one mm, it was. We got to come back with I that information. I have to find out who, who Paul gave. Yeah, I'll ask him, but I'll find out. I don't know who's – I don't even know in the practice locker room either, uh, practice facility. Mm -hmm. um, I do know that I have some of his towels. I think they gave <laughs> a lot of his towels out to everybody else. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I've been using a lot of those. <laughs> what up, Slice? You all right, baby? Good? <laughs> Pascal Siakam, yeah. welcome through. We're going to get to the mailbag real quick and let Danny go there. On the, they're about to head to Vancouver. First question. So we were in Halifax. We got to try the Donairs or the, mm -hmm. the, the, the Euro Donairs, red yeah, Donair the, sauce. Um, they wanted to know what were your thoughts on the poutine. Remember the poutine with the fry, the fries. Oh yeah, 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 the fries with the, the stuff on top of it. Um, <laughs> it was cool. You know, it's definitely something you gotta have the munchies for. You have a taste for at this certain time it's of night. It was munchies cool. food. I was full at the time, so you know what I'm saying. I wasn't really hungry. If I was really hungry, I'd definitely eat those. Probably before the the don the the don air the don airs yeah yeah the don air was okay it's just the sauce sweet. was too sweet for me <laughs> I'd rather go with the euro yeah you know, <laughs> over both of those yeah. but you know they were cool though it was cool uh, shout out to Halifax we like you but the, the don air sauce is just not uh, it's okay it, it takes some maybe seat. we ate at the it wrong take, spot yeah, yeah, so we'll try <laughs> another spot it. that's what I was suggest I told like, listen you went to the wrong place we'll try it again yeah, and then we'll see but, we'll come uh, back with yeah, a we'll come back with a recap but <laughs> yeah. I'm still leaning toward the euro biggest uh, advice you would have for somebody developing their game in high school uh, amateur age uh, in developing their game um, you know, there's so many trainers, so many things going on out today, man. Guys are kind of losing sight of what's most important about the game. That's the fundamentals. Um, you know, keep your fundamentals sharp. Obviously, work on the little things, the other stuff here and there. You should have more things in the arsenal working the game. But a lot of the times, we're not going to be doing those moves or all those, you know, things that these trainers are giving you in the game. Mm -hmm. But the basics are always going to come back, and those are what's going to get you by and keep you in the game. So you perfect those, then you know, you'll be all right. But you know, continue to work, continue to grind, and just because you get drafted, don't mean you made it. Or just because you're on a team for a year doesn't mean you made it. You know, you got to continually work and fight for your job year after year, day after day. So, you know, high school kids, you know, continue to stay in the gym and work on the fundamentals. Cool. I think that's perfect. I think it's time to go. Danny has yes, to go to Vancouver. Catch we got to get back. <laughs> we yeah. got to get, and I got to get back to the States. Yeah. So uh, it's yeah. been a good time for sure. It's been a good week in Canada. I also got to find my passport in order for oh, me to leave, man. too. You lost your passport? That's you might not make it out of here, bro. <laughs> See you guys yeah. next time. We're going to sure. take, we're gonna take a, sure. a break for a little bit. We'll be back and we'll recap the beginning of the preseason and things of that nature. Shout out to Steve Smith, the Toronto Raptors, for helping us here at Media Day. We'll holla at y'all later. Sure.